welcome to the first episode of the series and in this episode today I'm going to give you a general overview of the software, show the tools that are available to you and also give you the general idea of the interface of the Adobe Premiere Pro. So the first screen that you'll see upon opening up Premiere Pro is this screen. So I call it the open project or the create project screen. So if this is the first time you're opening Premiere Pro, this section of the software might be empty. So as you can see these are the list of previous projects that I have been working on. So what we need to do is open a new project from over here. You can also create a new team project if you're looking to work with other people. So we'll just head over and open a new project. So this is the new project window. As you can see the first on the top says the name. So we'll just get over and type out a name for the project. So I'll just give it, call it episode 1 because we're recording episode 1. So and the next one is the location that you have to choose where you want to save those project files. So make sure that you organize these project files very carefully because you might want to come back and re-render the soft edit or the re-render the projects that you have done before or you want to might look into it or might want to take some elements from the previous projects. So you can just click on browse and select the folder in which you want to save them. So I have created a new folder over here as you can see it's called Premiere Pro Tutorial Series. So I'll just double click on that and select this folder. So now the new project will be saved into this folder. So below that is a general section. As you can see this is called video rendering and playback. So you might have two options here and the default might be selected as Mercury playback engine software only. So what this does is Adobe Premiere tries to you know, increase the performance and increase the playback via software simulation. So the software tries to give you a better performance or a better playback while you are editing your project. You might also have an option called the Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration. So if you have a capable graphics card attached to your system, this option might be selected by default. So what this does is give you hardware acceleration directly from the GPU. So if you have a capable graphics card, I highly recommend that you select this option because you are going to get much better performance if you have it selected. Okay, so the moving on we have the video section. So as you can see it says the display format. So we'll keep it at a time code. As you can see we have feed frames and just frames. So we'll just keep it at time code which will show you the time or the length of the video followed by frames. So I'll explain all the time code as we go down the series. Okay, so the next part is the audio. So we will not change any of this. So we'll also keep the capture section same. So we'll also skip not touch the scratch disk or the ingest settings. We'll just leave it at that because we do not need it at all. So once we are happy with all the settings over here, we'll just head over and click on OK. So this is the default editing interface that you'll see once you open up a new project. As you can see, there are six panels over here. So two on the top and four on the bottom. And now we'll go through each one of them. Okay. So we'll check out the project bin over here on the bottom left corner of the screen. So this is where you will import your media and organize your media. Okay, so there are several ways to import your media content. So you can right click on the import section and click on import and this will open up the explorer. Then you can select the files and click on open to import the files. The other way would be double clicking on this area and it will also open the explorer window. So you can just again select the files and drop them into the bin area. So I'll just click over there. So say I'll just want this item. Okay, so that will import the item. So the third way is to drag and drop. So if you have an uh, explorer window open out there, okay, so I'll just go into the YouTube section where I have all my files. So suppose say I want the general assets folder. So this contains the small video files that I use in all my videos. So I can just click on that and drag and drop it into the pin area. So as you can see, it creates a new folder over here and it neatly organizes the files over or the files that I have imported. So if you want to organize your media after you have imported it, all you can head over down here and click on new bin. So this will create a new folder. So say I'll name it as music. Okay. So that will create a new bin or a blank bin. Okay. So I can, if I want to remove the audio files over here into this folder to organize them, I can just click on them and drag them over into the music folder. And now all my music is organized inside the music folder. So that's how you can organize your media and import your media. So if you want to change the view, you can always click on the list view that I have selected over here and you can click on the icon view. So if you click on the icon view, as you can see, if you hover over the video, you'll get a small preview of the window over there. So you can always zoom in if you need to preview. Okay. So all you need to do is hover your mouse over the preview and you'll get a small preview in this, that small window. 
However, in the icon view, if you have to open the assets that are present inside a folder or the bin that you created over here, you need to double click on them and they'll open up in a separate window. Which is why I definitely prefer it in a list view because that way I can keep it organized and easily access files from the bins that I have created. Now, you do not need the preview over here as you can easily get a preview of the media files inside your source monitor which is what we will look into next. Okay, so your source monitor is located to the left top corner of your screen. As you can see, it says source over here. So this is a very useful and a powerful tool at the same time to preview your media. Okay, so to preview a media, what we can do is we can just select on a video file or a media file and drag it over into the source monitor. Now, as you can see, it will give you a huge preview of the same and you can just hit the play button over there to get a quick preview of the media that you have imported. So. This is a very useful tool because you can preview the media even before dropping them into your project timeline to create your final project. So if you want a part of the or a section of this video, you can always use the mark in and the mark out tools. So say I want the video from here. So I'll just click in the mark in tool over here. Okay, so this marks the beginning of the video now. So it will just leave out the rest of this video. Okay, so say I want the video up here. So I can just click and the mark out tool. So now as you can see I have two options. So there is a video icon over here and an audio icon over here. So if I hold the video icon and drag it over here it will just drag the video without the audio and if I click on the audio it will just drag the audio without the video. So if you want to drag both the audio and the video at the same time okay so you can just click on the video itself or the video preview itself and just hold that down and drag it down into your timeline section. So that's the most important parts of the source monitors and we'll look through the other features of the source monitor as we go through this whole series. Okay, so as you see, as soon as we drag and drop media into the timeline, all these video and audio layers are created. So also with that started, as you can see, we have a new preview in the program window. So the program window shows you a preview of the video that you are editing currently on the timeline. So if you want the quick preview of the video that you're editing or the flow of the video, you can just refer to the program monitor, okay? So you can just hit play over there and it will just play the video as per the timeline as you can see. So the bar over here moves and you get a quick preview of the video that or the final project that you were creating in the timeline inside the program window. So that's pretty much the function of the program window. So you can of course zoom out so it's set to fit over here. So if you want to see it in a, a smaller way or if you want to do some transitions etc so you can just set it to a much more smaller part or if you want to zoom in and see more of the video okay so or more closely you can just head over in 200 percent and it will just zoom in over there so i'll just return that to fit and we'll move over into the timeline section okay so as you can see as soon as we drop a media there are several video layers and audio layers created so as you can see as soon as we drop a media into the timeline there are three video layers and three audio layers created. So if you want or if you need to work with more video layers, you can just always click on a layer over there and you can click on add track. Okay, so and if you do not need a track or you want to remove that track, you can always right click on that track and click on delete track and it will go away. So if you want to hide the track from the preview, you can just click on this eye icon over there and then that track will be hidden. So we can always drag in our B-roll footage into the video 2 or the video 3 layer and so the B-roll footage will be playing over the video 1. So if it's a full screen video, it will just hide the video on the video layer 1 as you can understand. So we'll take this quick lower third name, okay, so I'll just drag it over into the source monitor so you can see what the video actually does. So we'll head over and hit play and as you can see, it just has this part and the rest of it is blank. So it will just show up this animation and then go away. So what we can do is now is take that video over here and drag it over into our video layer 2. Okay, so now the lower third video will be playing above the iPad gestures video. Okay, so if we now hit play, the progress bar will move and as soon as we reach the iPad lower third underscore name video, as you can see, okay, so we'll hit play. So as soon as we reach that purple bar over here, as you can see, the top video now plays over the video layer 1. So what if we are to move the iPad gestures video up above the video layer of the lower third name? So now this is a full screen video. So now if you see, if we play it over here, you won't be able to see the lower third underscore name anymore because the video layer on top in video layer 3 is a full screen video and it's now hiding the lower third name. So that's pretty much how the video layers work in the timeline. Okay. So as you can see on the right side over here, this is just the sound bar which just measures the decibel output and gives you a green bar to indicate the width or the decibel level of sound in the video. So as you can clearly understand, a lot of windows are open by default which you won't be needing throughout your video editing process. So what I like to do is I like to rearrange my windows and my 
tool sections as per my need and convenience. Okay, so as you can see, there are many options provided by Adobe at the top of the Premiere Pro section, as you can see. So I like to edit it out in, or I like to rearrange the windows and the toolbars in a specific way as you see right now. So I'll just show you how you can do that for your own editing rig, okay? So you can just rearrange them as per your need, as per your convenience, and as per your choice. So now in this last section of this video, we'll just go ahead and look at how you can rearrange to make it look like I have over here. Okay, so we'll just head over into window and go back into the editing section. So this is the default view that Premiere Pro gives you when you open it up for the first time. So I like to keep my project bin out here on the left. So I'll just head over and do that. So as you can see, now I have my project window over here or the project bin over here. I like my program on this side. Okay, so I'll just keep it over there. So now the source monitor moves over to the right over there as you can see. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we'll clear out all these windows because I clearly don't use them at all. So I'll just head over and remove all those windows so I don't need media browser. So I'll just close the panels. Okay, I can just close that too. So if you want to just make a window reappear that you have closed by mistake, you can always go into the window section on the top over there and just tick on the window that you need. Okay, so I need the effects windows. Okay, so I'll just head over and take it into the side over there. Okay. So there it goes, it goes over there. Okay, so I don't need the history, so I'll head over and click on close panel and markers will I'll also close. Now as you can see, we have a much more wider timeline view. So this is very important or very useful if you have a very small monitor. So we'll just keep it at that. So as you can see, I like to keep the effects control over here and there are some more options like the audio clip mixture, which I never use for my video editing purposes. So if you need it, you can keep it. So since I don't use it, I'll just click over there and click on close panel. So I don't want a huge program monitor over there, so I'll just resize that window and make it smaller. I'll also make the project pin smaller as I don't need so much information from my project bin. So I always use the Lumetri color panel to color grade my videos. So I'll head over into the windows option and click on Lumetri color. As you can see, it will now appear over there. So I'll just take the effects controls over there and just drop it on this. So now we have a separate window with just those two tabs. So that's pretty much how I wish to design and I just have the very small audio bar here as it will still so show the levels which is good enough for me. So this is how I like to design it. I like the way how it looks. Okay. And this is my use case. So if you have a different use case, you can always arrange your windows in your own way. Okay. So once you have designed or rearranged all your windows in your own specific way, according to your own needs and choices, you can just head over into the window option, workspaces option and click on save as a new workspace. So then you can give out your own name that you want. So I'll just say tutorial because we're doing a tutorial and click on OK. And so the next time that you open up a project, it will always open up in this arrangement. So for that, you always have to keep this import workspaces from projects clicked. Okay, so if this is selected, no matter how many new projects you open, it will always open up in the arrangement of your choice. So that's it from this episode and in the next episode we're going to look at a lot of new things. So we'll edit out a whole video and learn about the whole video editing workflow. We'll also look in detail at the timeline of Adobe Premiere Pro. We'll also learn animations and keyframes. We'll also look at the effects and transitions or the video transitions and also check out how you can control and edit them in the effects control panel. So it will be a very long and a very interesting video. So if you're interested, watch that. The link for it will be down in the description below. Also, the link for the whole playlist will be down in the description below. So if you found this video useful, don't forget to hit the like button down below. And if you have any questions or suggestions or if you have any other thoughts, leave them down in the comment section below. I would like to read through all of them and help each one. If you're interested in tutorials like this, hit the subscribe button down below. It definitely helps the channel and gives me encouragement to make more series like this. So thank you guys once again for watching till the end of this video and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.